What's good everyone? In this video we're going to talk about like terms and combining like terms. So if you've never watched my videos before, you want to pause and try the examples when prompted. Also there are free guided notes available at DivideAndConquerMath.com. Highly recommend that you actually try to take notes and engage with this video just to make it a little more meaningful. So let's just jump right into it. What are like terms? So these are terms with the exact same variables and exponents. And they matter because only like terms may be added with matching like terms. So this is actually a thing where I'm, I'm curious, does this work in real life? And it, it actually totally does. This is like like terms is something that we intuitively understand. So just to give you an example in, you know, plain, plain English, I guess. So let's say that I have seven dogs, three cats and two dogs. How many dogs do I have? So you can tell then just, just by reading this, right? So you have, you say seven dogs and two dogs. So seven dogs plus two dogs, you have nine dogs. So this is actually my, my point. And, you know, cats and dogs, those are not like terms. So you can't add three cats plus two dogs. Like you're not going to get five cat dogs, right? So the idea of like terms we, we see in everyday life, we will just group up the things that are in the same category. Okay, so... Let's take a look at an example then just to kind of get the idea of like terms. So here, here's like terms in, in math speak. So it has to be the exact same letters and numbers. So, um, or sorry, exponents, not, not numbers. Um, so in this case, so 2x. So this is one like term, so I'll circle it in green. So anything else that is just a plain x would be the other like term. So right here, here would be another like term. So those two things go together. They are like terms. Okay, so now let's take a look at 7y. So with 7y, so I just need y, anything that has just a y in it. So that would be this, 8y, because they both are just y's. And then, so remember, it's that idea of exact same letter and exponent. So here's 6x squared, so then I need another x squared term, which would be this one over here. So that's the idea behind exact same variable and exponent. So maybe what you want to do here is with this next example. So this one I've, I've made it a little bit harder. So I've got all kinds of different letters and exponents. Maybe pause the video here, find your like terms, and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so starting here with x squared, y squared. So notice I don't really pay attention to the number in front. I'm literally just looking at x squared, y squared. So as I scan through this, here's my other x squared, y squared. So here's the other like term. Okay, so now 7x squared, y. So as I scan through this, here's another x squared, y. So here's x squared, y. Okay, um, 2 xy squared, so I need another xy squared, which is right here, xy squared. And then there's actually no matching like term with this last one. So this negative 3x squared just it stands alone. And so this is kind of a, a larger point too. You're, it's not like you have to have multiple like terms, like you could always just have one by itself and then you can't do anything with it. Okay, so like I said, only like terms can be added. So Let's take a look at some examples where we're gonna combine like terms. So this first one's just kind of the, the basic idea behind this. So now I wanna add or subtract all these things together. So if I kind of apply that same logic from before, so the three X and the negative five X are like terms. And then the two Y and the nine Y are like terms. And so you literally just add the numbers that are in front of them. So for instance, this is three X. Make sure you don't forget about the negative here. So this would be three minus five. If that throws you off, you can always put the things together so that you don't lose that negative. So you can put the X's together and then the Y's together like this. That's a, that's a good way to kind of foolproof your, your calculations, I guess. So three minus five is negative two. And then it's just negative two X. So it's not two X squared. You don't do it. Like the X's just stay the same. It's just like what we were talking about with the dogs. If you have seven dogs and two dogs, it doesn't become nine dogs squared, right? It's just dogs. So now instead of having dogs, it's, you know, X's and Y's. 
And then 2y plus 9y, so just take 2 plus 9, that's 11. And then you just tack on the y at the end. Okay. For b, so let's see. I've got 4x squared and 2x squared. Those are my like terms there. So 4x squared plus 2x squared, I'll just color code the whole thing. Let's call that 6x squared. Then let's see, 2x and 8x. So 2 plus 8 is 10, so that's 10x. And then at the end, we just have 6y squared. Now, if you wrote these in a different order, like if you wrote 10x and then 6x squared and then 6y squared, or you, you wrote these in some other order, that's totally fine because commutativity is a thing, right? So it doesn't matter the order that we write them in. Um, but you do have to have 6x squared, 10x, and 6y squared. You have to have those three terms in your answer. Okay, so why don't you pause the video here and maybe give this one a try. This one is a little bit deceptive. And then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so for this one, so this is where, you know, the like terms, I, I know there's fractions in here, so sometimes that kind of makes people freak out a little. So if that happens to you, consider what I did before. So put your like terms together. So I've got one half x and three halves x. So those I have to combine. And then two thirds y and minus two and a half y. So these like terms here, these are the, the simpler ones to do because they have a common denominator already, right? So I don't have to worry about the threes over here or whatever. I just have to worry about these are the like terms. I can already combine them. So if I just take one minus three, that's negative two. So that's negative two over two x and we can simplify that to negative one. We'll do that in a second, hold that thought. Now, this one is harder, right? because you've got two thirds, so the denominator of three, and then two and a half, so denominator of two. So we're gonna have to get a, a, a common denominator here. And I've talked about at length, this is something you really wanna stay on, on top of, especially if you're in, in my class. Um, you wanna stay on top of being able to do these calculations. If you ever get rusty on them, go back and watch a review video. So the first thing I wanna do here is I wanna convert this into an improper fraction just to make my, my life easier for finding my common denominator. So I'll leave the 2 thirds y alone. And then I'll rewrite this as, so I take two times two is four plus one. So that's five halves y. Okay, so now I've got two thirds and five halves. What's gonna be the LCD between them? The LCD, I'll just note it over here. My LCD is gonna be six. So um, I'm gonna do some manipulations just for, while we're in this step. What do I have to multiply this three by to get to the LCD of six? I have to multiply the three by two and whatever I do the bottom, I have to do the top. So I'm gonna multiply all those together. And then for this five halves y, so what do I have to multiply two by to get to the LCD of six? I have to multiply it by three. So I'll just write that over here. Hopefully you can read that okay. Okay, so now let's keep going with this. So this guy here, this negative two over two, this just becomes negative one X. So just negative X or negative one X, doesn't matter. Now for these parts, so two times two is four and two times three is six. And then three times five is 15 and three times two is six. So here's now what I have to actually combine. So this is gonna be four minus 15, all of that over six. So this is gonna be negative x minus 11 over six y. So that was a little bit of work. It was definitely tricky. Um, and so sometimes you might have to find a common denominator for one of the, the letters and sometimes you might not. So in this case, for, with the x's, we didn't have to find a common denominator, but the, with the y's we did. So it's just kind of luck of the draw. So I have just two more here if you wanna try two more. So you can go ahead and pause the video and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so looking through this, so I've got three x squared y cubed and negative two x squared y cubed. So that's gonna leave me with just x squared y cubed. If you put the one in front, that's fine. It's just not necessary. So I don't usually write it. And then we've got the seven x squared y squared and the x squared y squared. So this and this, and this has an invisible one. So it's really seven plus one. So this is plus eight x squared y squared. And then that's it for that one. 
And thankfully, uh, for this next one, so if th this one's actually nice and straightforward. So I've got this one fourth X. So there is no other X, right? <laughs> so we're just, that's it, one fourth X. Okay, and then let's see, I've got two fifths Y and one fifth Y. So same denominator. So one, two fifths plus one fifth will give me three fifths Y. And then we have this minus one half. There's no other term with it, so there you go. So once again, just a reminder, if you if you had these like in a flip-flop order in a slightly different order, that's fine. But the one half definitely has to be negative. These have to be positive. These have to be the numbers attached to those letters. So that's what you're looking for. And so that covers it for this one, guys. So hopefully that was helpful. And I'll see you guys again. Thanks for watching.